With Mary's permission, I'm going to break all the rules for this fly. It's called a bright fox, and it's supposed to use fox fur for the body. I'm guessing that probably since often fox urine stained fur was used, that's probably what it was because it's a bright yellow. She does say that this fly was tied with other fibers and even wool. I don't have anything yellow other than floss, so I'm going to be using floss for the body. Uh, this is a fly in Mary Orvis Marbury's book, Favorite Flies in Their Histories, and I'm tying it from the illustration since there really is no other information about the recipe for this book. It does imitate the Neuroptera in their first appearance from the pupa, so that includes lace wings and some other flies in that general category. I'm using red thread because the head of the fly in the illustration is red. I am putting a gold tag on the fly. I have a bicolored tinsel. I'm tying it in with the gold side to the hook and then flipping so that the gold side shows as I wrap. And it's just a few wraps here at the bend of the hook. I'll bring my thread back so I can wrap up over that tinsel. Flip out the extra tinsel. For the tail, I'm using two black feather fibers. And it's a fairly long tail, so at least the body length and maybe a little bit more. And I'll go ahead and wrap that in. Try to keep those on top. Clip out the butt ends. And then here's where I am deviating from the original recipe and the name of the fly, the bright fox. I am using bright yellow, but I'm using floss instead of fox. And again, I think, I'm guessing again, because Mary doesn't say specifically, Okay, I got that little, well, I'm, I'm doubling the floss, so I got that little loop that I'm trying to tie in there. Okay, wrap down over the top of that. And go ahead and bring my thread back up to the front. And then I'll wrap that floss for the body. Try not to bury that tail. So again, I'm guessing that this was tied with urine stained white fox, so it would have been yellow. And I have read that that was a fairly common, it looks like I should have grabbed my hackle pliers for that floss. I'll let go of it there. It's kind of hard to use hackle pliers on two strands of floss. Go ahead and tie that off. Leave plenty of room up in front for the head. It does have a fairly substantial red head and I think all of Mary's flies had that because she was tying on hooks that didn't have an eye and so part of what she was doing was tying in a length of gut material that would then would be used to attach the fly to the line. I'm going to do the wings next and uh, there are dark wings so I'm going to use some feathers from this dark dun cape. I've got two of those I'm back to back them, clip them to length and they're sparse enough so that I think they do kind of 
give us that lace wing look. So I'll try to split those one on each side of the hook and wrap those butt ends in there. Let's see if I can get them to stand up. Perhaps the hardest part of this particular fly for me was finding something to use for the throat. It really looks more like a throat. It's not a full hackle. So I am going to invert my hook. And then I'm going to use some fibers off of this yellow feather. These are those fluffy fibers down here at the bottom of the hook or of the hook, the bottom of the feather. So I'm tying those in kind of like a like you would tie in a throat, I guess, try to get them around the eye of the hook so they're on both sides. Hold on to those tips. Wrap up over, yeah, grab everything. Maybe a pinch wrap here would be better. I'm going to go ahead and turn that right side up. It's kind of a mess right now, but I think I can clip out that mess. Now losing my wings. I'm going to go ahead and wet this all and pull it back. Wrap up over the ends of those. Create that head. And then I'll come in and just try to snap out that butt ends of that feather fibers without taking everything out of there. Just leaving a few for a throat underneath. Go ahead and put a whip finish on that. I will put some head cement on that head. I do use a diluted goop. I'll put a recipe for that goop in the description. Just dip a needle in the jar, get a drop. It'll soak into the head and dry clear. And I think I have a passable copy of the fly in Mary's book, The Bright Fox.